You better lose yourself to the music <laughs> the moment you own it. You better never let it go. Don't do that now. And action! Welcome to the behind the scenes of Thanos versus J. Robert Oppenheimer. I think everybody knows who Thanos is. The big purple ugly villain from all the Avengers movies. But J. Robert Oppenheimer, I didn't know who it was really until I started seeing the suggestion a lot. J. Robert Oppenheimer was the head dude of the Manhattan Project, which is a word that I, for some reason, have trouble saying. It was the secret project set up to develop a weapon using nuclear fission. It was in the 1930s, two German dudes actually discovered that a uranium atom could be split. And the legend has it that J. Robert Oppenheimer, as soon as he heard that, because he was a nuclear theoretical physicist, as soon as he heard that they did it with uranium, he said, oh my God, they can make a bomb out of this. Or, oh my God, we're going to make a bomb out of this. The nuclear bomb, the atom bomb, the bomb that in all intents and purposes ended World War II. It got dropped on Hiroshima and then Nagasaki. That's gotta be heavy, man. I killed a bug, like a spider the other day, and I still feel a little bit bad about it. But he was on the other side of the toilet seat, so he had to go. You wanna talk about death? How about the one that looked at you and swiped left? I'm the destroyer of worlds. You got your nuts handed to you by a squirrel girl. Merry Christmas, kids! We got some new ERB swag. If you wanna get some, we got some pins and some cool wristbands like this and some t-shirts and stuff. If you wanna check them out, they're at erbmerch.com. You wanna be as small as old Thanos? Get yourself a Rob Thanos t-shirt! Buy him, give him his Christmas gifts. Take a picture of yourself. Hashtag Epic Rap Battles of History, because I want to see him. You can go to discount for the holiday, thanks to good old Thanos. Thano ho hos. Man, I burned the Avengers down to embers. Sent half your planet to be slaughtered. Now I'm off and off and hammer like I did to my daughter. This is another beat by Epistra, who also made the beat on Joker vs. Pennywise. Let's look at these cellos real quick, because I think these are really nice sounding. So there's these four track elements that make up these cellos. We've got this one. This one. and they come together. We just had 10 degrees lunch. Some people had meat. Some people had vegetarian dishes. All the air conditioning is just got really noisy, so my whispering joke probably is not gonna work that well. <laughs> so as we were working on the character of J. Robert Oppenheimer, one thing we wanted to make sure to convey in the physical performance out of Pete is how haunted he was by his own creation. <laughs> Those are my dogs, and they're haunting me! It was based on our version of J. Robert Oppenheimer that we wanted to portray, which is that one where he's talking about, I have become death. Vishnu. Trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi armed form and says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. That interview on TV is so creepy and so haunted. And I watched a lot of documentaries about a lot of people who worked on the Manhattan Project. And Everybody has that same look. It's like this, I've seen and done things that I can't regret, but I'll never be able to forget. You know, it's like this deep uh, sadness. And so that felt like the way to do Oppenheimer. And I think one of the things that we pin down on deep sadness is that even when they are gonna look at you, they're not looking at you. And then for the effect of a rap battle every once in a while, we just look at you. That was just something we decided to do with this guy. Listening to you took everything I have left. After your reps, I am become deaf. It takes two. It takes two 9-volt batteries. 
Alright, pull that out of the fire alarm. <laughs> yeah, do the fire alarm. This is the Thanos glove. We did modify it by gluing it onto this lacrosse glove. The fingers, when we first got them, before Morgan got his hands on them, were originally too long for me to be able to like make a fist. So it was just kind of like flappy like that. So Morgan, our Streamy Award nominated costume designer. No, 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 Streamy Award winner. He took off the gauntlet pieces that were here and kind of added his own here. It's super important for Thanos to be able to make a fist and grip and actually snap and have him do it in a natural way. So we had to make those adjustments. These are just any any sports store you should be able to buy or underarmor.com, I assume, or underarmor.com. <laughs> <laughs> Did we got a sponsor yet? What's up? <laughs> underarmor.com. We're going to butcher your product and make our product. Yeah. But the really cool part about the glove is that it lit up! Hey! hey. That is kind of cool. That is very cool. The ship was fresh! <laughs> with a character like Thanos and the limitations we had based on his face. <laughs> and just his body, that giant muscly body, it doesn't move quickly, it's gonna look weird. So we decided to use a steady cam. <laughs> Cut! Now we've done this maybe six times in the past. We used it a lot in Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. We used Steadicamp behind Stanley Kubrick when he's tricycling down the hallway. I know we used it for Deadpool and Boba Fett. We used it a lot in season five. We were spending other people's money in season five. We used it a lot. So we had to bring in our Steadicam operator, Jose. Uh, my name's Jose Babcock. I was uh, the uh, Steadicam operator today. This allows you to move the camera smoothly through space without having to lay down in a track or anything. It's a person holding it, keeps it from bouncing around. So working with a Steadicam operator is cool, but it's certainly challenging. I've done it a couple times before. Usually in the rap battles, it's like I'm looking right at the lens and like that's where I'm rapping. But when it's a Steadicam, he's like walking around you and stuff, but you're still supposed to look like you're looking at the camera that way or at the character this way. So you have this guy like, like whoa, moving around you, you know? Uh, and you're not supposed to look at him. So it's like this weird like capoeira camera dance. But what it does is it gives really long shots, a lot of movement, and you can move in and out. That way you don't have to cut back and forth so much. Got a physical when I'm rapping. Six infinity gems when I'm packing. Stick your tiny nuclear dick back into your pants, Dr. Manhattan. So the backgrounds. Let me tell you the background on this battle, son. So the background for Oppenheimer, we really modeled after the Trinity explosion footage. So it's this dusty red atomic cloud kind of feel. Almost like Book of Eli, for those of you a little bit older, Night of the Comet perhaps. It's like a red kind of dusty everywhere. And we wanted to use that sped up footage of the trees going over in a sped up kind of way and, and use these things that like flashbacks. Now I gotta give a shout out to Josh and Javi and Pete, but Josh particularly on this battle has just been busting ass on these backgrounds. I'll like go to the studio at like 9.30 at night to like pick something up and he'd just be there still like tweaking on this thing. So shout out to those guys. I started working with ERB in season five. I started as an assistant editor and the first graphics thing that I did was in Thomas Jefferson versus Frederick Douglass with I'm so down with revolutions I invented the swivel chair and then I did the map in Alexander the Great versus Ivan the Terrible and then ever since then I just did more and more and more. So we don't normally do a lot of BTS for post-production usually because we're deep in the edit and we don't pick up the camera but I wanted to go over one effect. So this would be an example of the kind of effect that we hope people don't notice. So right here you'll see for this line, we really liked this guy's face, but this guy, he's got his hands up at the bottom of the frame, and that was like a nice little detail that this guy's missing. And his shoulders go up, so his hands are going up, it's just you can't see his fingers. All right, so in order to get the hands coming up from the bottom of the frame, the first thing that we need to do is have the fingers as an asset alone. So I'm gonna film myself with green screen material over me and hopefully try to get my fingers to look like Pete's hands. So what I ended up actually doing 
was using two different takes for each hand and then I had to change the size and then I did a lumetri color to match the skin color and then I blurred it a little bit because it would be in the foreground so it would be a little bit blurry and matched the timing so that the fingers came up at the right time. Okay, so here's the final product. Between the worst take, see? The dialogue's got too many... It's super fast, super subtle, and I don't think anyone's gonna notice, but it does make the shot better, so I'm glad we did it. Anyone who believes that Thanos did nothing wrong crap has obviously never heard you rap. Oh, snap. So this is the last battle of 2019. The last battle of the decade. That's crazy. We're gonna be back in 2020, I don't know exactly when. We call this like 6.1. It's been a whirlwind of a year, 2019. Season six, it wouldn't have been possible without you who watched these ERB2 videos. It wouldn't have been possible without Patreon. Thanks for watching and checking out what we do. Battles are gonna come back in 2020. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Thank you guys very much. You're the best fans. Thanks to Ross, our editor for the behind the scenes. Shout out to Ross. Thanks, bro. Merry Christmas. He doesn't believe in it. Where's your rhythm? I thought you had the time stone And your punchlines sound like they came from rhyme zone You might be something in the MCU But between us, who's the worst MCU? When you talk, you can drop a truck Between each syllable, your dialogue's so slow Drax thinks you're invisible